morning, I want to welcome you to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. It is a joy to serve this congregation and to be a part of the family of God that gathers here and worships here on this virtual platform. I want to remind you that at wsmethodist.org, you can find links to our Sunday school classes, to our connection newsletter. You can find opportunities to give to our Christmas at Epworth. You can also find ways to participate in our Heifer Project International, and you can find ways to connect with our congregation as we continue to serve God through this community of faith. We are so delighted that we have had these outdoor worship services in recent months, and we are thankful that we look forward to our December the 20th carol sing. We will be gathering at four o'clock. However, due to the high number of new cases and new infections, we are asking that you pre-register online, if at all possible. If you have not pre-registered, don't worry, you are still allowed to come. We will just simply ask you to sign a registration sheet at the table there. There will not be anybody attending the table, but you can sign in easily there. That record gives us an opportunity to know who has been here and how many people we might need to contact should we ever have a need to provide contact tracing. We have not had that experience and we have had very safe worship experiences because we are asking you to wear a mask the entire time and we ask you to social distance for at least six feet or more. We are so delighted that we can be together and to share our faith in these ways. We are hopeful that on December the 24th, we will have a 12 o'clock and a four o'clock Christmas Eve service in which you can participate. And we will be outdoors in our parking lot, but we will have found that even now in this time, that space has become sacred to us. So we hope you'll join us on December 20th and December 24th for our last three services of this year, outdoor and in person. As we look to next year, we are anticipating two services in January, on January the 10th and on January the 24th. We are continuing to plan so that if it is too cold, we hope to have alternative ways for you to get the information and to have access to hearing the message and the sermon, perhaps while you're in your car. Stay tuned. There's a lot going on. We do hope that you will continue to support the congregation and her ministries with your gifts to our operating budget and especially as we approach the end of the year where we need all of those funds to help us complete our ministries thoroughly for this year. I would invite you now to worship God with me today. The promised one of God brings good news to the oppressed and binds up the brokenhearted. The promised one of God proclaims liberty to captives and release to prisoners. The promised one of God comforts all who mourn and gives a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, holding fast to what is good. We are witnesses to the light of Christ. Let us worship the Lord. The Lord God's Spirit is upon me because the Lord has tempted me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim for release for the captives, and libertation for prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Isaiah 61 through 1. We, re we relight the candle of hope and expectation. We, re we light the, can the candle of reparation and peace. <laughs>
We light the candle of joy. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, as we journey through this Advent season of anticipation, please help us stop and slow down so that we notice all the things you are doing in the world around us. Thank you for your love and mercy that surrounds us even during difficult times. Please comfort those who mourn, strengthen those who are tired and run down, Heal those who are sick and provide for those in need. Make each of us a blessing to those around us. In the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his early disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from Isaiah the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 3. Hear now the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Our lesson for today comes from the second book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, and I'm reading verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the Lord God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. May God bless us in the hearing of this word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I heard an interesting story on the Today Show Tuesday morning while I was sipping my coffee. The spotlight was on an etiquette contributor whose name I never heard, but I got her message loud and clear. Go easy this year. She was talking specifically about greeting cards and those delightfully warm Christmas letters that we all receive in the mail. She was suggesting that folks keep their greeting cards to more traditional styles rather than whimsical ones. She also suggested that when you write your Christmas letter, that you should do so with less of a focus on material accomplishments or successes and focused instead on your personal life and changes that might have taken place within your life and within your family. She said that we should let go of those elaborate decorations on our backdrops for photographs and maybe go for a simpler look, perhaps losing the matching pajamas or sweaters that are so common and dressing down for this Christmas. She reminded us that not everyone has had such a wonderful year some people lost their jobs this year. Some people had their hours reduced. Other people are still grieving for loved ones that they lost due to COVID-19. And of course, we are all alarmed by the rise of new cases, even in our state and around our nation and the numbers of deaths that are skyrocketing. As I listened, I thought about some of your Facebook posts. Someone showed pictures of no less than four trees in their house. Someone else bragged that they decorated their Christmas tree in less than 30 minutes. I'm really jealous. Some of you displayed beautiful heirlooms, ceramic Christmas trees, nativity scenes, and some of you posted festive holiday photographs from years gone by. You are proof that Christianity really is countercultural, even in the 21st century. Even in the middle of a devastating, heart-wrenching pandemic, we Christians are people who light candles for hope, for peace, and today on this third Sunday in Advent, for joy. Even now, we read, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Yes, we are countercultural, even here at Washington Street. We have put up our Christmas trees and the doors of our church are decorate, decorated with wreaths of green, symbolizing the life and the light that has come into the world. Our hallways are adorned and our poinsettias are on display. 
We are lifting the needs of children and families in our community and our world, and we are singing great songs of joy and praise with the prophet Zechariah and with Handel's Messiah. Rejoice greatly, lo, your king comes to you. Joy, joy, joy. Even in these circumstances, we are giving thanks to God. For, as Paul penned in his letter to the church at Thessalonica, God did not call us to faith to improve our circumstances, but to give us a joy and a hope that lifts us beyond every circumstance to the joy of knowing Christ Jesus our Lord and to the surpassing joyful mission of living and loving and serving in His name. Early in His ministry, Jesus stood up to read from the Scriptures in the synagogue at Nazareth. He read the words that we heard in our Advent devotion. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I am convinced that the Spirit of the Lord that descended upon Jesus at His baptism and has been poured out upon those who believe in Him is the source of our joy in every circumstance, even in these circumstances. It is the Spirit that convinces us of the truth of faith, even in the middle of a hopeless seemingly never-ending pandemic. It is the Spirit that beckons us to emulate Jesus, regardless of our circumstances, even when we are mistreated by others or even by society. And it is the Spirit that empowers us to emulate Jesus and to respond to the needs of our neighbors and our friends around the world to respond to others' needs rather than putting our own needs and our own desires first. Because of that spirit, we boldly go into the lives of those whose families have been devastated by COVID-19, and we speak words of comfort and words of hope. We engage in these ministries because Christ and this Spirit has given us a mission to bind up the brokenhearted. Even now, we light candles and we sing hymns. Even now, while we mourn, just like the church at Thessalonica did when they were devastated by persecution, and by the death of their fellow Christians. We engage in ministries to feed the hungry and to share toys and clothes and gifts and farm animals with children and families around the world because we have this Christ and this Spirit that gives us a mission to bring good news to those who are oppressed. We engage in discipleship ministries that open our hearts to the transforming power of the Spirit of the Lord so that we become like oaks of righteousness, a people made strong in the joy of the Lord. We engage in these ministries because we have been baptized by water and the Spirit. This is the gift that was foretold by John the baptizer in the wilderness. He's preached, I have baptized you with water, but he 
the one who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself, at table with his disciples, sharing with them his last words of instruction, told them that he would send to them the Holy Spirit, an advocate. And so, even now in the middle of Advent, we remember Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we remember the words of our baptism liturgy, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. The joy that we share at Christmas is not rooted in circumstance. I have buried church members on Christmas Eve. I have been to the hospital to visit parishioners on Christmas Day. You have sat with sick friends and family members, and you've gazed at that lighted Christmas tree, and you felt an unsurpassing joy simply because of your trust and your hope in Christ. Or maybe you have exchanged a simple gift and whispered, I wish I could have done more, only to hear, I want nothing more than to be with you. Joy is not found in what we possess or in the circumstances of our lives, but in the faith, hope, and love that came down at Christmas. Joy is discovered in the baptism of Jesus Christ by which the Holy Spirit comes upon us and sends us into the world for God. And this season, where crisis seems to abound, may we experience anew the surpassing joy of knowing Jesus Christ as our Savior and the power of the Holy Spirit. May we boldly engage the world with joy. Amen and amen. Please join me in our prayer after response. Gracious God, teach us to give thanks in all circumstances, for you are always with us. Thank you for the privilege of sharing what we have with others, of giving ourselves away in love, and of receiving the gifts that others share with us. With our whole being, spirit and soul and body, we rejoice in you. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Good Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now we hear a endless bliss. News, news, Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door and ye are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Go into the world to boldly live with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.